Hola amigos de Atlanta, les saluda Andrés Cantor para invitarlos a que lean el periódico Estadio, líder en deportes. En Estadio usted encontrará noticias y reportajes locales, nacionales e internacionales. Estadio, el periódico deportivo de los hispanos, desde 1997 cuenta con los periodistas líderes en deportes, líderes en opinión. Búsquelo en los principales negocios hispanos de la ciudad o visítenos en el internet estadiosports.com Para publicidad en Estadio, comuníquese al 770-4. 14 11 07 Summer of last season. So I thought last season was a interesting experiment. Um and um we decided to uh hire a coach uh that the fans uh asked for uh that had a lot of experience playing in Mexican first division team. Uh and who um, we thought would be a, a really good coach. Um, the experiment was that uh, in the United States, coaching is much different than pretty much everywhere else in the world. And, um, the, um, and we also, at the same time, had a, a, a coach that we put into place that has never coached before. So in many ways, for our Bundes, it was very unfair to put him into that position. But that's what the fans wanted, and that's what we did. And I think the, the results of the season reflect uh, what we try to do with the experiment. Um, and so, anyway, going, um, you know, going further about the season, I thought we had the best attendance season that we've ever had. Uh, I thought from the front office standpoint, we did a really good job to make the experience um, – Uh, fun and enjoyable for um, a very a variety of people, and um, so overall, I was actually very very pleased with the season, other than the actual record and the uh, play on the field. I was one of the few that believed that it was not going to turn out well on the field. Uh, was it a mistake? I don't think it was a mistake. I think it was something. Look, we're all in, t in this together, and we all have to kind of learn together. So the best way to learn is to try things and make mistakes, and I think it was something that uh, the, the fans now understand more deeply uh, that, you know, the issues and the needs and, and what is required in order to be able to win in, in this league, where if we didn't do that, I'm not sure that – that would have been understood as well it is now. So I think it was well worth it. So I've got a two-part two, um, answer to that. Uh, one part is I don't think there's enough in the Hispanic leagues in Atlanta, enough talent in Atlanta to be able to field a team in the NASL that can win. Um, having said that, that doesn't mean there's not two or three players that can be found and to, uh, that can help the team. So I don't think you can field a full team with it, but you can definitely maybe find two or three players. The challenge is, isn't just finding the players. The challenge is, is finding players that are also legal. And, uh, and so what happens just almost by definition The ones that are playing in the Hispanic leagues that are not known by the other youth clubs around Atlanta and that aren't playing in the system, that means they're probably illegal. Because if they weren't illegal, they would be playing in the system. So, so it's, it's so it's a it's a tough problem. We you know we'd we'd like to we'd love to bring them in, but the laws don't allow us to at the same time. So you know. And and you have to you want to win on the field. So where do you spend your resources? So we've we've talked about it. I know I know that uh, Rodrigo and um, you know and Michael Oki um, you know would like to use as much local talent as possible. Uh, I'm I'm more the one that says I think that that's nice in thought, but not realistic. Um, But um, but I let him, you know. I don't I don't stop him from doing it. So Matt Mac Kanji, you you know Mac, 
Uh, remember Mac? The um, and he's from Senegal, and he moved to Atlanta when he was 15 years old, and he was uh, and um, as a minor, and they came here under uh, uh, asylum from Senegal, running away from Senegal, and for some reason his parents and his sister got U.S. citizenship, but he didn't. We still to this day don't understand how that happened. And uh, and then when we started looking at him and wanted him to play, it was about a year long to a year long process just to be able to uh, and, and several ten thousand dollars to just be able to get him onto the field, and that still didn't guarantee that he was able to uh, actually then get a permanent visa and be able to uh, stay in the United States, and that took some more money. So even by the time we sent them to the MLS, they then had to spend more money to make him uh, legal. I mean, we even got, because it was so weird on the amnesty program, we actually got a senator involved. So I mean, these things are extremely complicated. And uh, and we just can't do it with every player. I mean, we, we'd love to, but we, but we can't. I mean, I'd love for the laws in the United States to actually change. You know, I'm, I'm an immigrant myself. I think the whole country has been you know, has been built on the backs of immigrants. And I personally do not like the laws. I do not like what's going on in Georgia right now. And uh, But there's there's not a lot I can do about it. I have to live with it just like, like everybody else. First of all, um, you know, Alex was an assistant coach. And he was an assistant coach under Jason. He played in this league. Uh, he played for Honduras. Uh, he's an extremely intelligent player, uh, but that wasn't only his su successful in Honduras. He was also very successful in the United States, and uh, and so and he was an MVP, you know, for the MLS when he was playing for Miami. So he understands, in my opinion, of what it takes to uh, win in this league, and um, but at the same time, he brings the style of play and and um, the skills of the Latino, uh, you know, community, which I, you know, coming from Croatia, I like skilled play. I don't like just kicking the ball over the top. I, I like that. So uh, I want, I want to go in that direction. I want us to succeed in that direction. And I just thought that Alex has a much better chance of succeeding in this environment, in this country, then uh, with that style of play than just about anybody else. And so that's why I felt very comfortable with Alex being the head coach. And in fact, last year I was the one, I brought that up to traffic and I felt like maybe Alex should be the head coach and Abundas be the assistant coach because Abundas didn't have any experience in this country. And then we'll see. And, uh, and so, you know, it's a year later, you know, fast forward and we, you know, I got the way I got my way <laughs> and uh, and so um, and then um, you know uh, on the back office stuff like I'll address Rodrigo um, I would I, I, I wanted Rodrigo to stay both him and Alex they also really care about the silverbacks you know Rodrigo I always say he, he bleeds silverback blood and I think that's really important. I think uh, when you bring somebody from the outside and they're just going to be the coach for a couple of years and then they're going to move somewhere else, I, I don't think that's very healthy for the club. We, we want to build that passion. We want people if, – if the people in the organization aren't passionate about the Silverbacks, why should the people on the outside be passionate? So I think it's very important that we're passionate, even you know inside the organization. And Rodrigo is one of those people. And, yes, you know maybe his network – uh, around the United States and finding players isn't as good as maybe some other guy, but he'll get there. You know, that that just takes a little bit of time and he'll get there. Getting the passion, you either have it or you don't. You know, that's not something that can be taught, in my opinion. And so we'd much rather go with the passion and then teach the other stuff and, and, and spend the time to learn the other stuff, not necessarily teach it, I'll learn the other stuff than it is to um, just bring somebody in for a couple of years and then they leave and then somebody else comes in. We're the managing partner and we have the ultimate decision. Uh, but uh, traffic... Uh, is also um, somebody that is a partner with us 
and that we respect, you know, what their opinion is. And uh, we take everything into consideration. So as an example, when we hired Abundas, traffic was very much for it. I personally was not for it, but Michael was for it. Uh, uh, Rodrigo was for it. So, um, you know, when you have partners, you don't always, you know, win. And you, and you wait, you know, and, and I could be wrong, you know. So if everybody around the table thinks that they're right and I, and I don't, um, you know, I don't always have to fight that. And, and, and that's why I said that, that's, that's why I said it was a really good season because I think it'll, I don't think we'll be debating that anymore. And I think it was worthwhile for us not to debate, uh, some of those things. We'll see. I mean, hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll, I can't imagine us doing worse than we did last year <laughs> on the field, but maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe we'll do worse and then I'll, you know, eat my words, but I think we'll do significantly better on the field. And uh, I think, I think the fans will like our decisions. For three reasons. Uh, one, he didn't speak English. I mean, that right away, that makes it harder for him because he, you know, we're in the United States. He's got to have American players. There, there's no way around it. We, we can't make a whole team just out of Spanish players. Um, two, um, he, he didn't, um, um, I don't, he hasn't been around enough. You know, he's brand new to the league and brand new really to, um, um, let me let me put it this way. In in order to the United States wins on athleticism, so if you look at the United States national team, for many years they they've won against the Mexican team, probably on a you know if you look at it, it's probably on athleticism. If you take player for player skill level, you would say the Mexican players had more skill than the American players. Um, but in order to overcome the physical ability of the Americans, the Mexican team had to be much more skilled, much more skilled. And that's happening today, actually. That's why I think Mexico really, you know, an annihilated the United States the last, I don't think they've played since the last time I saw it. But it was, I mean, the Mexican team was very skillful and, they, and it showed on the field. They weren't just a little bit more skillful playing against athletically better guys they were a lot more skillful playing against probably equally athletic guys they were also in very good shape so Bundes, um you know came into the united states probably not appreciating probably wanting a lot of skillful players but a didn't know how to find them didn't have um you know any way you know di didn't speak the language didn't know the, uh, other areas in the united states so how's he going to find those players we wanted to play a certain style of skillful players, but, you know, they had to be, in our league, they had to be much more skillful in order to win. But if they were much more skillful, they wouldn't be playing in our league. They would be playing somewhere else. They might not even be playing in MLS. They might be playing in Mexico or in Europe. If they were that skilled that they could overcome the physical, you know, uh, of some of the other players, then they're probably, you know, too good for our league almost. So, um but I don't think he had a real good appreciation for that. And and thirdly, he's never coached before. You know, he's never coached. So, you know, so the poor guy, I mean, I felt bad for him because he's been put in a country that he can't speak the language, coaching for the first time, and asked to play a certain way that um, was almost impossible to win with. And uh, and so I don't think it was all his fault. I don't. I didn't think he was gonna. I didn't. I didn't think the experiment was gonna be bad because I thought Abundas was never gonna be a good coach somewhere. I thought the. I thought that it was just not gonna be good for the Silverbacks in the environment that we're here. That he's not a match for the environment, and um, for the same reason that you know Ibrahimovic was not a match for uh, Barcelona. Is he a good player? Obviously, was he a good player for Barcelona? No. And that was pretty clear when you watched in the first couple of games. You could see that that he didn't fit into the system, and that that was my opinion on uh, Abundas. But in Mexico, you know, or somewhere else, he might end up being an excellent coach. I guess the the message is is that 
um, you know, it, it's going to take time. I mean, we're when you look at uh, soccer around the world, most of those clubs started 100 years ago. And, you know, and, and to create the passion and the, um, and, and the success on the field, it, it, it takes time. It takes time. And, um, and so, um, you know, if, I, I, wish, I wish they would come out more. You know, I wish they would come out more because it is a good time. Um, you know, the soccer is, is not bad. You know, our team in the past has been much better and much, fun, much funner to watch. Um, you know, um, or better record, maybe not funner to watch, better record. I'd love to combine that we have a, a better record with a better style. That would be awesome. But please come out and support us. The only way we're going to be able to get better is by everybody working together to make us better. And so, you know, that's, that's my message. Please. Hola amigos de Atlanta, les saluda Andrés Cantor para invitarlos a que lean el periódico Estadio, líder en deportes. En Estadio usted encontrará noticias y reportajes locales, nacionales e internacionales. Estadio, el periódico deportivo de los hispanos, desde 1997 cuenta con los periodistas líderes en deportes, líderes en opinión. Búsquelo en los principales negocios hispanos de la ciudad o visítenos en el internet estadiosports.com. Para publicidad en Estadio, comuníquese al 770 414-1107